Now that we can calculate stock turnover ratio, that's kind of useless if we don't know how to evaluate it and what it means. So looking at the stock turnover ratio as a number, so in this example we calculated a ratio of 2.0, what does that actually mean? Well, what it means is on average at any time during this period we had stock on hand of $20,000. Uh, that was our average stock. So I guess on average at any point during the period that's how much stock we had. What does the 2 mean? Well what that means is our cost of goods sold was 40000 during the period. So what that means is we turned over our stock twice. We managed to sell out all $20,000 of stock once and then we managed to sell out on average $20,000 of stock twice. So we turned over our stock twice this period on average. An easier way to interpret it is to put it into days, stock turnover in days. So using this example we ended up with a ratio of 183 days. What did that mean? Well, the same thing to begin with. It means that on average we have $20,000 of inventory at any one time. Uh, but what's easy to interpret with this one is we can say on average it takes us 183 days to sell all of that stock. Uh, so when we have another $20,000 average stock, it would take us another 183 days to turn it over or sell it. How to interpret the figure? So if it goes up or down, what does that mean? Well, if it went from 2.0, that means we turned over our stock twice this period on average, and it went down to 1.0, we turned over our stock only once this period. We'd say that's a bad trend. It means we're going to get less cash from sales, and that's a negative result. On the flip side, maybe we just have more stock. We just haven't sold it yet. We actually have higher average inventory. Maybe we bought stock in bulk and got a discount, which is a good, uh, good result, but just not yet. On the flip side, what if the stock turnover ratio went up from two to three? We'd say that's a really good result because that means we sold stock more or faster or turned it over more often this period. That is gonna mean we're gonna get cash from sales quicker. Conversely, it might mean that we had to lower prices to increase sales to do it. We can sell anything faster if we lower the price enough. We don't know whether we made a profit. So one limitation of this ratio is we know how quickly we sold things but we don't know how much profit we made. Looking at the days figure, if the days average stock turnover in days went from 183 to 95, so that would be a good trend. It means on average we're selling our stock in only 95 days and we're going to get cash from sales faster. Again, the negative might be we have to lower prices to do it and we're not actually making a profit on those sales. If the trend went the other way and it went up from 183 days to 271, we'd say on its face value, that's a, re a negative result. On average, we are taking uh, much longer to sell out all of our stock. Uh, but again, maybe we just increased the amount of stock we had and we did that by buying in bulk at a lower price and we just haven't sold it yet. So we could argue that that's a positive. How long should it take to sell stock though? What's a good number? Is one day, three days, seven days, 30 days, 90, 180 and so on. What makes a good number? Well, we can't have a universal answer. There's many ways to look at it. It depends on one thing. What was our result last period? We always want to compare it with that. We can also look at what was our budgeted expectation? What were we hoping to achieve? Also, what type of stock do we sell? That's really important. Any industry averages? What do our competitors do? and also our credit terms offered by our suppliers. Let's have a look at the first one. Let's compare it to a previous period. So this year we achieved a stock turnover in days of 47. Uh, last year it was 31. Is that a good result or a bad result? We're going to say that's a bad result. On average, it took us 16 days longer to sell out all our inventory. What about if achieving 47 days this period was after a stock turnover of 64 days last period? We'd say that's a good result. On average, we've reduced the time it takes to sell stock by 17 days. Looking at the ratio, the number 1.5, what if um, that's what we achieved? What if our budgeted expectation was 1.2? Is that a good result or a bad result? And this is where the ratio itself is difficult to interpret. When it's not in the number of days, it can be quite tricky. With this one, we're going to say that is actually a good result. We have uh, turned over our stock one and a half times this period. We only plan to do it 1.2 times. So we'd say on average, that's good. Uh, looking at the opposite, what have we budgeted for a turnover of 1.9 and only achieved a turnover of 1.5? We'd say that's a negative result. We didn't turn over our stock as much as we budgeted for at the beginning of the year. 
A lot of it will also depend on the type of stock we sell. So for example, if we've got a stock turnover 127 days, um, if we're a florist selling flowers, that's going to be terrible because the flowers will be uh, have gone rotten by then and we can't sell them. Uh, but what about if it's a car, we run a car yard, that would actually be pretty good. A car costs thousands of dollars, so it obviously takes a while to sell each one. We could probably argue that a stock turnover ratio of 127 days is pretty good. So we want to look at the type of stock we sell. What about if we've got a stock turnover ratio of 35 days? So that's quite low. For clothing, is that good? We'd probably say yes, because clothing's seasonal, so we want to try and get it done within 90 days, and we're achieving much quicker than that. But if we're selling fruit and vegetables, we're going to say 35 days is bad. Again, it's going to have gone off before we've had a chance to sell it. So the uh, 35 days is good for some businesses and bad for others. So we really can't give a certain number of days and say this is good or this is bad. It really depends on the type of stock that you sell. What about if we had a stock turnover of three days? Again, if we sold milk, we'd say good. Milk's got a, a use by date of probably five to seven days. If we sold bread though, we'd probably say that's bad. Bread's kind of fresh for one day, maybe two days at most, and that's gonna be a negative result. Another way we can look at it is our industry average. Our stock turnover ratio is 18 and we are just jeans. Is that a good result or a bad result? Well, one way we could analyze that is say, our competitor Jeans West, theirs is 15, and we'd say that's a good ratio for us. We are turning over our stock on average three times more than our competitor. What about if JJ's is achieving 21? Well, we'd say that's a negative result. They're turning over their stock more often than we are. Cotton on is 17, we'd say that's a good result. We are turning over our stock more frequently, uh, once uh, more each period. Looking at this, this is some data from uh, last financial year. We've got Maya with an average turnover of 94 days. Super retail groups, a super cheap auto, that's 147 days. And the reject shop, 45 days, basically. And that makes sense. The reject shop buys cheap stuff and they sell it cheap. They're going to try and sell that very quickly and not make much of a profit on each one. Maya sells a wide range of things, but generally the prices will be much higher than the reject shop. So it makes sense that their goods are going to take longer to turn over in terms of days. And Super Cheap Auto sells a lot of things, but a lot of their things cost thousands of dollars. They sell a lot of big products in there, um, like skylights and stereos and things like that. So yeah, it's probably acceptable to have a, a much longer stock turnover in days than the reject shop. What about the credit terms that we get offered? Our suppliers sell to us on 30 day terms and our stock turnover ratio is 38 days. Is that a good result or a bad result? We're gonna say that's a bad result. Suppliers wanna to sell to us and get their money back within 30 days. On average, we're not selling the stock for 38 days. There's a bit of a lag there, eight days where we don't have the money. What about if our creditors uh, actually offer us terms of 60 days? Well, all of a sudden, that 38 days is a very good result. We're selling our stock well before the supplier actually wants their money back.